Hey team, we're gonna learn how we can automatically optimize our images on Netlify using the Cloudinary Build plugin. I'm Colby Fayok. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification button for future updates. Netlify is a hosting and automation platform that provides a lot of services, particularly building and deploying websites and deploying them out to the web. In order to do that, all we need to do is set up our Git repo, connect it to Netlify, push our code up, and it's going to automatically deploy for us. On top of all this, Netlify also offers plugins where we can add these build plugins right into our existing site, where as soon as it goes through that build and deploy process, plugins have the opportunity to hook in at different stages and do different things. For instance, one of those is the Essential Next.js plugin by Netlify, where it helps you actually build and deploy Next.js applications, which we're going to use in our demo today. Now, when dealing with things like media and images, we can automatically have our images served straight from Netlify right from our site. Like here, I only have two images actually on my homepage, but if we click through to them, we can see that they're being served by Netlify and they're just simply served from our root domain. But these files are really getting served as is, meaning they might not be optimized and they might not be in a particular format that will be the best for the particular browser, where if we use a solution like Cloudinary, we can both automatically optimize those images and we can serve them in a modern format if the browser supports it. Speaking of which, Cloudinary is a media platform that provides a lot of capabilities for managing your media and serving it to the web. We're particularly going to use programmable media where with the Cloudinary API, we can tell Cloudinary that we want to automatically optimize and automatically serve the best modern image format that we can for the browser that's making the request. So to do that, we're going to use this Cloudinary Netlify plugin that I created where we can simply install this into our existing project, deploy that out to Netlify, and we're automatically going to go through and swap out all the images, both local images and remote images, to be served from Cloudinary automatically optimized. Now to do this, I created this demo wiki for the Arcane TV series on Netflix, where really all it is is an image gallery where we're going to be able to see how we can install the plugin and automatically optimize our images after they get deployed out to Netlify. If you want to follow along with the same project, you can find the link to this demo right inside of the description. So I'm going to first copy this command. You can use either npx or yarn where I'm going to head over to my terminal. I'm going to paste that in and it's going to get started by pulling down this example template. It's going to install all the dependencies for us and it's also going to reset Git history so that we can really hit the ground running when we're building this app. We can even see that once it's done, we can navigate into that new directory where I can simply run yarn dev or npm run dev, which is going to spin up my local server. I can open that up inside of the browser and we can see in the background, Next.js is going to start compiling that application so that we are able to get our simple site where we can see that it's really just an image gallery where we're going to be able to show this use case. So our best bet for deploying to Netlify is by using a Git provider, where particularly you can use GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, but I'm gonna use GitHub for this walkthrough. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new repository. Where I'm gonna call this my Arcane TV Wiki, where I'm going to go ahead and create that new repository. And we can see that we get a list of instructions for how I can add my local project to it. Now, again, I mentioned that we're our Git history is actually reset as part of that create next app process. So all we really need to do, and we can even see that we have the main branch already, all we have to do is add the remote orange origin, and then I can push this project up into my Git repository. And we can see that once we refresh, I now have my new project. Now heading over to Netlify, I now want to use that GitHub project to create a new Netlify site. So I'm going to click this button, new site from Git on my Netlify dashboard. Where I'm going to then click GitHub, where if this is the first time you're accessing, it's going to ask you to authorize with GitHub, but I already actually used it before. So I'm gonna look for my repository, my Arcane TV Wiki. And once I search for that, it's eventually going to come up where then once it does, I can select that repository. And now we can see that we get the build settings for our particular project. Now, since we're using Next.js, Netlify is actually able to determine that and it's automatically going to install the essential Next.js build plugin, which is great because that means we don't really need to do anything. And we can also see that it's also filling out the build command and the publish directory. So again, we don't need to do anything. All we need to do is scroll down and click deploy site and it's going to kick off a new Netlify deploy going out to admiring Panini. But once it finishes, we can see that it's now green and we can actually open up this new URL, which again, this string is randomly generated, where we can now see that we have our new wiki up on Netlify.app. Now, like I mentioned before, we have our local images that are actually being served by Netlify. If I open up my developer tools and I head over to the network tab, 
we can see under image. Now, if I refresh, we can see all those requests, or if I look at one of the images, we can see that it is coming from Netlify, but we can see that they all are getting served again as is, meaning no optimization and it's not trying to use a format that's going to be our best bet for this particular browser. But because we did deploy this on Netlify, we can now use Netlify build plugins, which is where Cloudinary comes in. Now, as I showed you before, you can install a lot of plugins right inside of Netlify inside of the plugins dashboard, but this plugin isn't quite published to the Netlify directory yet. So we're gonna install this manually by installing it as a package from NPM. Now, if you need a handy link, you can find this link to this plugin right inside the YouTube description. But if we scroll down, we can see that we wanna first install that package into our project where we can either use NPM install or yarn add, which I'm going to use. So first, I'm going to paste that right into my project where it's going to first install that package locally for me. Where next, we wanna create a Netlify config file. While there's a lot of things that you can configure for Netlify inside of the UI, you also have the ability to create a file-based configuration where you can do things like set up how your build actually gets kicked off or how your deploy happens, and even set up all the plugins, which is how we're gonna set up this plugin. So inside of my project, I'm going to create a new file at the root of that project called netlify.toml, which is where we're going to add our plugin configuration. Now back on the plugin GitHub page, we can see that in order to do this, we can simply copy this snippet, where if I paste it in here, we'll explain what's happening, where we have our plugins that we're defining, where particularly we're going to defi define that Cloudinary plugin, and we need to set an input of our cloud name so that Cloudinary knows which Cloudinary account to associate these images with. Now, in order to find our cloud name, we can head over to our Cloudinary dashboard, where right at the top under account details, we're going to be able to find our cloud name, which I can simply copy that string, where then I'm going to simply paste it right into that cloud name property. Now, make sure you use your own cloud name for this, because I'm currently using a limited account, and it's going to be the same thing as if you create your own free Cloudinary account. So make sure you're using yours so you don't get limited by my account. But now the way that Netlify works is anytime I push out a new commit out to GitHub, it's automatically going to deploy that on the main branch. So I'm gonna simply say git add minus a, gonna commit my Netlify config, and I'm going to push that out to GitHub, where we can see that we have a new build that automatically kicked off with that commit message of Netlify config, where once it's finished, we can again open up that URL in a new tab, where we can see our project working exactly as we expected to. Now, we can't tell by simply looking at it that it's getting served by Cloudinary. So let's first inspect one of these elements where we can see that if we look at the source, we can now see that it is getting served from Cloudinary. Better yet, if we look in the network tab, we can see that all these files are getting served as AVIF, which is a modern format. And since my browser supports that, it's able to serve those images in that modern format, which is also a smaller size. Now, because I left the other tab open that had the previous version, I can actually jump over and see that our images are much, much smaller and we can see they're JPEGs, but if we switch back over, they're under half of the size of the original image. Now, this is critical for people because if you're serving these images to either mobile browsers or even people with slow connections, these big images are going to make a difference and it's also going to prevent eating up all of their bandwidth but also generally faster loading pages are going to provide a better experience. And if you're on the e-commerce side, it's going to help more people convert. Now to take this a step further, currently the way that we're serving these images is with the fetch API, meaning we're passing in a remote source to these images, which Cloudinary basically grabs that image and it returns it in an optimized version, but it's not actually storing it anywhere on our account. Now, if we wanted to instead upload our images to Cloudinary as part of this process, we can also automatically do that with the plugin, where the difference is going to be we're going to be able to get more features that we can use by uploading them to accounts, such as additional transformations that you might not be able to get by simply fetching it. So we have two options. We have the ability to upload them unsigned, or we have the ability to upload them signed, which again, it just really comes down to the amount of control you have over your images. If you're doing it unsigned, you just need to create an upload preset, but we're gonna do a sign where you can specify your Cloudinary API key and API secret right inside of Netlify for it to use during that process. Now, in order to find your API key and your API secret, you can head over again to your Cloudinary dashboard or right at the top underneath your cloud name, you're gonna be able to find your API key and your API secret. Now to actually set up those environment variables inside of Netlify, we're gonna head back over to our Netlify site, where we're gonna to head to site settings. We're on the sidebar here, we're gonna to go to build and deploy, 
and then environment, where under environment, we see environment variables, where we're gonna hit edit variables, and I'm gonna specify Cloudinary API key, and I'm gonna paste that value right inside. I'm also gonna create a new variable and call that Cloudinary API secret, where again, I'm gonna paste in that value. And those names are referenced right inside of the GitHub repository for this plugin if you need to see what they look like. But once we're done, we can hit save. And before we actually kick off a new deploy, we have one more thing that we need to do. Now, if we look back inside this configuration, we can see that all we need to do is set the delivery type to upload inside of our Netlify config. So back inside my Netlify Toml, I'm going to set my delivery type to upload. And just like before, once I actually push those changes up inside of a commit, it's going to kick off. And like before, once the site is actually deployed, we can open it up inside of a new tab. We can see that everything's still working, but if we actually open up one of these images in the inspector, we can see that it's now getting served as an upload and it has that ID, which is its Cloudinary ID. We can even see that if we head over to our media library, we have all those images now right inside of Cloudinary. The awesome thing about this is not only can we take advantage of the easy DevOps with Netlify, but we can also automatically optimize all of our media and make sure that we're serving it as best as we can for our visitors. There's a lot of power in being able to use Netlify for building and deploying our sites, but also being able to use Cloudinary to optimize and transform those images to provide the best experience we can. Do you have a favorite Netlify build plugin or what's your favorite use case for Cloudinary? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn more about how you can use Cloudinary, such as transforming images to automatically crop and scale, you can check out this video where I teach you how to use face detection with Cloudinary. Or if you want to learn about some of the other Netlify features, in this one, I teach you how to create a contact form where Netlify is automatically going to take those submissions for you. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future updates. Thanks for watching.